Russell Watson is Britain's biggest opera star. Big voice, big scales, big time. But now he's leaving behind the safety of the concert hall for the sweaty world of rock. I think there's three main boiled dreams. To be a famous sports person, in my case it'd be a footballer. To be a movie star or to be a rock singer. And for me, the rock singer thing, I think, appeals more than anything. Russell has to prepare for the most testing performance of his life. He'll be performing the ultimate rock anthem, Bat Out of Hell, with larger-than-life legend, Meatloaf. I think for people who are used to singing opera, and classical music to move into rock. It's the style that's so hard to get into, to switch between two different styles is quite a tough thing to do. You've not only got your vocal style to change, you've got your personality to reinvent, as it were. It's not just a case of standing on a stage in front of a classical audience. It's a different breed of people probably watching this music and appreciating it. So he's gonna have to sell himself in a very different way. And I have my suspicions that, well, Russell's going to find it very difficult. But before Russell performs with the mighty loaf, he's going to attend rock and roll boot camp to be licked into shape by some of its best teachers and biggest rockers. First stop, London's Brixton Academy. Russell's come to find out what it takes to be a rock and roll frontman from Def Leppard's Joe Elliott. Def Leppard have been rocking the world for over two decades. Joe knows the pitfalls awaiting Russell. He's obviously got the voice. I mean, he can sing notes in tune and he can hit the highs and hit the lows. It's whether he does them in a rock attitude. It's how you express yourself. It's that's much more important than singing it actually in tune, or in time even. It's not singing it like a wuss. Do you think there are any parallels between rock music and, and classical music? Rock music is very introspective, and it's very, or, or it's very narcissistic. It's always like, you know, I'm gonna rock you tonight, yeah. or, you know, we're gonna... It's all me, 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 or me and you, and me and you, and we're gonna get together. Whereas I think with, with classical, I, I was al always under the impression that it's, you're telling stories, yeah. maybe from the third person. You're singing about Romeo and Juliet, not being Romeo or Juliet. But I think the hardest problem you're going to have is with credibility. Yeah. It's just getting people to believe that you mean it. If you're not comfortable up there and, and you, you look like you're doing it in, in karaoke style, you know, yeah. kind of look, you can't make eye contact with people, that's when people don't <laughs> believe that you mean it. Have you worked with Meatloaf? I've, we've toured with Meatloaf. We did gigs with Meatloaf in 1983. How yeah. is he? He's a good lad, that's actually, good. yeah. But for you, it's, it's a case of, like, you're really going to have to knock him away with your performance. Yeah. Because people are going to be comparing you. Rock fans like these are going to take some convincing. Who's Russell Watson? <laughs> Russell give, us a, Watson. Give, us a give us a clue. If he's an opera singer, he's just stick to opera singer. I can't really see Joe Elliott or Axl Rose going into an opera with a big fat lady on stage and singing like, like that, you know, because it doesn't fit. So. If he does it uh, with the Andy, tenacity that it deserves, then great, yeah. If he does it with the guts and devotion that it deserves, I'm all for it. He's got that image already, hasn't he? He's got a loser then. And he's got all his following that he has already. And I think most people are just going to take the mic off. As Joe takes to the stage, Russell gets his first taste of a rock crowd in full flight. Glyndebourne, it ain't.
rock audiences, if they like you, it's all about screaming and jumping up and down. And if they don't, it's all about shouting at you and throwing things at you. I mean, I saw a singer get knocked out by a cabbage once, you know. So, I mean, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen to him. Russell is left in no doubt as to the size of the challenge that lies ahead. Next stop is America and rehearsals with Meatloaf. He knows he's going to have to change the way he looks, the way he sings, and even the way he moves. Well, we're off to LA. That's not Los Angeles, that's Laura Accrington. We're off to LA and we're going to find out about sex, drugs and rock and roll. Something which, of course, as you're all aware on TV, that I partake in none of them. Well, maybe the sex. <laughs> I can't wait to get in my new hip jeans. What Vienna is to opera, LA is to rock. The city is home to many a rock legend and is a magnet for rock musicians from all over the world. First, though, Russell is heading to the venue for his first encounter with Meatloaf. And he's late. Where is he? What the hell's going on? Sick and tired, you know. What well, this guy thinks of friggin' prima donna out here? What? What he's got? You know what is this? What is he doing? I mean, how, how long? How long is he gonna keep me waiting out here? How long is this? Oh, hi, Russell. How you doing? <laughs> so I was just giving. Okay, so Russell. Russell has just hours to master a song that Meatloaf has made his own and sung for over 20 years. Bat Out of Hell was a monster hit. The album stayed in the UK charts for nine years and sold a staggering 25 million copies around the world. And it's not just the vocals Russell needs to perfect. This huge number involves choreography and acting. Now, now you've got to tell her why, you know, tell her why you want her to be. So, hey, I need to get the lyrics first. To me, because I have a theater background, it's about emotionally giving an audience something. You know, if you convey the emotion on the record, the idea is to get the audience in the same place live that they went to on the record. And I think that's what audiences want to see. Then tap her on the shoulder. And this is in the... Instrumental. It's in, it's the in, yeah, the instrumental. Right oh, before that. Okay, oh, right. this yeah, is the shit, moment man. we've been right. waiting for. Fair enough. Okay, yeah. got you. You know, it gives yeah. you something to do. Yeah. <laughs> I've got you. What you have to realise is I'm actually walking into somebody else's domain with their band, their stage and their music. So they have a certain vision and a certain view of how they want their music to be. This is how my show works. <laughs> is it really? This is how my show works. <laughs> yeah, this okay. is exactly what goes on. I'm used to sort of going on stage and doing what I want. So to have somebody sort of directing me to do things that I normally wouldn't do um, is strange. <laughs> Don't say a word. Silence is gone. Don't say a word. Meatloaf ups the stakes by asking Russell to sing his latest track too, but it's proving tough. It's, it's pretty hard to keep up with me. I mean, even the band has a pretty difficult time keeping up with him. Anyone that isn't nervous on stage with Meatloaf is probably just plain old crazy, because you never know what's going to happen. This is the moment we've been waiting for. I've developed the whole plot. We're gonna do a little show. We're gonna get him on all of it. He doesn't know it yet, but we're gone. Oh! No. Do that. You want me to do that? I want you to do that. I'm gonna do that then, baby. Meat, as his best friends call him, needs Russell to work the crowd like he's never done before. Now faster! Bro, 
Francis. Yes, you will. <laughs> he told me to do so many different things uh, during rehearsal that it all got a bit confusing. Well, then be depressed and walk away. Cello? <laughs> <laughs> he was nervous, so he, that's the first thing we got to do. We got to get him to relax. That's okay. We give him a few shots of tequila. He'll be fine. <laughs> I'll start it. Sounds are screaming and the fires are howling way down in the valley tonight. There's music in the air and the thunder in the sky and a killer's on a bloodshot street. Russell, I think, just hasn't developed his rock chops. Going down in the tunnel with a deadly horizon. Oh, I swear I saw a young, young boy down, down in the garden. He was starting to foam in the heat. heat. Like on, on high notes where you put the voice as opposed to a legit place. As opposed to... Same note, different sound. And wherever you are and wherever you go, there's always going to be some light. With rehearsals over, Russell is facing a steep learning curve. Luckily, Los Angeles is a rock mecca and the ideal place to develop those rock chops. First stop, Seth Riggs. Seth is one of America's top vocal coaches and has tutored titans of rock like Aerosmith and Kiss. The biggest challenge for Russell was to change his style. He has to get a, a like a, a hard edge, a jangly kind of sound, which a great many of the rock and rollers use. People will come in and say, do you teach the rasp? I have never heard Russell sing much above a B flat. A lot of your rock singers will, uh, what they call screech tenors, go up to D above high C or perhaps even E flat. And we will see today if I can get Russell up into those areas. So, in other words, what I would do, first of all, is the very same thing that you would do in opera, and we go through the first bridge in your voice. Something like... That's it. For Russell to sing rock, he will have to shorten his phrases. Instead of saying, uh, I love you, you might say, I love you. Russell, now that you vocalize a little bit, as you people say, let's have a go at it. Absolutely. And, uh, to test out Russell's go. rock voice, like Seth oh, throws him in at the deep end with a meatloaf classic. Let's ask Bill <laughs> Schneider to come in. I play a few scales, but I don't play this kind of stuff. Lovely. Uh, Bill? Oh, there he is. Hi, Bill. Hello, Bill, Bill, this is Russell. How Russell, are you? Bill, nice Schneider. to meet you. Okay. I would do anything for love. Bravo. I'd run right into hell and back. Mm -hmm. I would do anything for love. I never lied to you. Right there. It's Although Seth knows he has to try and teach Russell to sing like a convincing rock star, he has deep misgivings. Rock singers will resort to yelling, and that's why so many of them come to such vocal disrepair. You can do that, Russell. To be do that. In a chest voice. In your, in your mix. To be good. To be. There you go. He must sing properly, otherwise he takes a chance on ruining his natural gift, and that would be a crime. And some days it don't come easy, okay. some days it don't come hard, that's it. And some days it don't come hard, and some days it don't come at all, and these are the days that never end. I've and been to a lot of vocal coaches, and it's almost like there's this sort of apprehension and this feeling of, oh God, not another vocal coach. It's been great, it's certainly given me some food for thought. As long as the planets are turning, as long as the stars are burning, as long as your dreams are coming true, you better believe it. And then slow down, that I would do it. He's got to sing better than rock singers, but use their style. That's the secret of it.
Seth is somebody that, and whenever I'm in LA, I would like to come back and see because I believe that he could possibly take my voice to places that I've not been to with it before. So it's been a, it's been very interesting for me today. But the voice needs to do more if he's going to keep up with Meatloaf on stage. Time for some real rock practice. Q band members from Saxon, the inspiration behind Spinal Tap. Metal doesn't come much heavier than this. Working with the band is producer Chris Tangarides, who has collaborated with dozens of other top rock acts, including Black Sabbath and Judas Priest. The hardest thing Russell's going to face is the sheer volume, this, this surge, because it is. If you stand, I, I kid you not, it's like a, a, a jumbo jet taking off when they start up. <laughs> If anyone can tell Russell what makes a great rock tune, then Chris can. Do I have a great riff? If, for example, the most memorable, classic, all-time thing, Smoke on the Water, Deep Purple, yeah. that, 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 that. I mean, everybody knows that. <laughs> The that's riff. the riff that will happen again and again in the song then the vocal on top of that gives the melody the drums have to explode the bass has to thunder the guitars have to take your head off when you get with the band that onslaught blaring out at you and you having to sing over it this yeah. and still try and retain the, the, the melodies and the pitches when you can't hear yourself really? is the thing it's really really hard there's no escape for russell the band insist on putting him through his paces Things that um, you have to sort of get into when you're yeah. in rock music. It's all this posturing and you have to point pointing. You've got to do a bit of pointing. <laughs> There's a few bands come up with stuff like this and <laughs> try to invent things that don't quite that right. That one. Yeah, oh, that, that one. That's a good one. Legs are very important. Oh, yeah, in rock. Yeah. So you have to come forward <laughs> like that, you see. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I noticed our kid here when he was playing his guitar. Yeah. He was giving it that, wasn't he? You have to. You have to. They're definitely rock and roll. They turned up and the first thing they wanted to do was crack open a few cans of beer and start drinking. That's something that I just couldn't do. But what I imagined a, a stereotypical rock band to be. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. That's one thing we miss. We should have got him practicing screaming. Screaming and pointing and thrusting, and I think he'll go a long way. <laughs> <laughs> In the rock arena, image is as crucial as your sound. For Russell to cut it when he walks out on stage with Meatloaf, he's going to need to lose the suits and gain some attitude. Niels Lozauer is rock's most renowned photographer. 
He's trained his lens and immortalized the images of all the top rockers, including the mighty Meatloaf. So what can he do for rock rookie Russell? I haven't met Russell yet. I don't know if he's shy and meek or if he's got a lot of attitude. You know, I like a nice, strong image. We're going to pump out what I can pump out of him, which is, yeah, sexy is good. Just make him look like a star is good. Make him look cool and tough, and we'll know right away if it's going to work what we're trying to do. Russell, though, is more suits you, sir, than cool and tough. Turning him into a rock rebel is the job facing top stylist Jackie King. Russell's wardrobe case as it stands right now is full of beautiful things from Versace and Gucci and we're going to be pulling out things that are a lot different than he's usually used to wearing. So I can see him as sort of a leather denim biker or we could do something very kind of sexy, romantic, vampire-like with gothic clothes and long hair and a little bit more makeup, kind of wicked looking. I'm not sure that I have any idea of what they could or what they will do to make me over as a rock star. Because I already think I look pretty trendy. Well, I guess this must be the place. Oh, welcome to the uh, studio. How's Hello. it going, Russell? Yeah, good. You sound Pleasure man. meeting you. So what's up? You look like you've been hanging in L.A. for a while, huh? You got that yeah, L.A. look. He's going to take a little bit of imagination and a little bit of role playing and uh, a little bit of risk taking on Russell's part. Thank Start you. with that. That works. Or Levi's. It's your basic. Yeah, leather pants are good for the motorcycle. Yeah, I'll be okay. think so, yeah. yeah. The basic work boot sort of thing. We got the cowboy boot sort of thing. No, all right. All right, we'll go with these. Yeah. All right. So I'll get are these you size nines? They look small. Uh, they're nines. Are they? Actually, oh, okay. they're girls' tens. The girls' tens. And then I got these like really cool right bands. You look like a bug. I'm not sure know. about this. What's up, Russell? Looking good, man. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Neil and Jackie decide to break Russell in gently by giving him a prop to sit on. If you're all insecure and don't feel right, it's all in your mind. It's like your king. I try to give them the attitude by giving them the little speech like, come on, you guys, you just went triple platinum. There we go, rock god, hold that. You don't need this photo crap. Our record's number one. We're playing two sold out shows. Stare right in my lens, number one, okay? No one's better than you. You got 20 girls that want to come back to the hotel room with you after and do whatever you can imagine. Don't forget, the sooner we get done, the sooner you get back to the hotel room with the girls. Chin up a quarter inch. Neil was totally off the wall. He certainly has um, a very different way of working from the photographers that I've been used to working with. Lower the shoulder a little because it's jamming in. There we go. That's good. Hold that. Okay, it's another roll. Looking good, man. Come on. Come on. When you hate me, I'm grinding you bad. Hold that. You may be cooler than you think here. Hold on. Okay, now hold on. One more. You're crazy. Oh, you. <laughs> That's good right there. That's way better. Biker boy Russell is looking good, so Neil and Jackie push him that step further. Off comes the beard, on go the stick-on tattoos, but Russell's really feeling the squeeze. You're going to kick my ass. You're going to look here. Do one of these, this, this, this. Point to me, whatever you want. Whatever feels good. Stoop down. I might have trouble getting down that way. Nah, you can get down. I think you could get down. You weren't that old. Are you sure? These are know. very tight, oh, man. Come on, Whoa. you can do it. That's good. Like you know my motto: feels all right when it's good and tight. <laughs> get down. Yeah, Come these on. are definitely good and tight. Yeah, that's good. Hold on, okay. There we go. That's good. Oh, where are you going? Where are you? Oh, you old man. Come on, you getting tired? Uh, get, on, down, right. get down. Get <laughs> down. Come on. I want more like leaning towards me at the front. So put, yeah. I can't lean any further forward with these bastards on. <laughs> Jackie! Yeah. Get over here. What makes rock really on, work is this raw animal sex appeal, but it won't work unless they have it on the inside and you can pull it out of them. And if you don't have that, then you're not a rock star. That's it, brother. That we are done. That was good stuff. It's the best role we had. Good man. All right, good work.
Thanks a lot. We done. You're rock and roll, baby. Let's go. Have a good time. Time has run out for Russell. Tonight, he'll be performing Bat Out of Hell on stage with Meatloaf. This is the decider. Will he be able to put into practice everything he's learned? As the crowds arrive, backstage, Russell prepares in his usual way. That's mineral water for him and tequila for meat. Don't even start with me 20 minutes before I go on stage. Because I'm a different human. I'm locked, I'm focused, my eyes are, I'm, I'm a killer. I mean, I, don't, don't mess with me. What are you gonna do, son? Are you fucking ready, boy? Are you ready? I'm ready. You sure? I don't know. <laughs> oh, dear. In Salford, they got a slap for that. <laughs> Son, you ready? I'm asking you, are you ready, Russell? Oh, I'm ready, but... <laughs> As Meat takes to the stage, Russell nervously awaits his cue. Meat whips the fans into a frenzy. This is it. Russell is now facing the biggest challenge of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, Mr. Russell Watson! There's no going back. Summons are screaming and the fires are howling way down in the belly tonight. There's a man in a shadow with a gun in his eye and a blade shining oh so bright. There's you in the air and there's thunder in the sky and a killer's on a bit shot streets. Oh, down in the tunnel with a deadly horizon Oh, I swear I saw a young boy down in the gutter He was starting to fall in the heat Oh, baby, you're the only thing in this whole world That's pure and good and right And wherever you are and wherever you go There's always gonna be some light But I gotta get out, I gotta bring it on down Before the final break of dawn so we gotta make the most of the one night together when it's over, you know. Now I can tell you all about adrenaline and how it works. He got a little confused now and then, but he was absolutely but but you see, Rock, you can't you can't do anything wrong. It's like clashing the Titans up there, you know. There was one part where we were just singing off each other. He was doing a bit, I was doing a bit, then he did a bit, then I did a bit, and it was like the battle of the voices. That was fun. I first saw him, I thought he was one of NSYNC. <laughs> I thought I but no, he did a good job. I thought he was going to be more like subdued or more like mellow, but he actually put a good live show on. It was absolutely fabulous. I can't believe someone can go from opera to rock and roll like that. It's incredible.
you live in the moment. And in the moment, it was amazing. Probably wake up tomorrow and go, fuck me, yesterday I sang with Meatloaf. <laughs> Yay, rocked. Yay, rocked at the end, especially. Ah, oh, come on, baby. Yay! You sound great on everything. You have the right to remain silent. I'll get the light. You get the smile and you say nothing at all. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. To make the conversation take so much. Some dormo. Bow.